Here's the question for today. What kind of small block Chevy should I build and test? Should it be a mild combo, you know, designed for torque and towing? How about a dual purpose street strip combo? How about something even wilder? You know, something you're going to put slicks on and really get after. So which combo should I build? What the heck? Let's do all three. In this video, we're going to take a look at three different small block Chevy combos. The first one designed for torque production, you know, low RPM. The second one, dual purpose, street strip combo, something with a little more cylinder head and a little more camshaft. The final one is our wild combination with a lot more cylinder head, a lot more camshaft and a lot more RPM. So what do all three of these combinations have in common? Well, they all share the same short block. Let's check it out. To get things started, we wanted to start off basically at the lowest form, at the most, <laughs> at the least powerful, most basic form of transportation. This is a 350, as we talked about. We did have forged pistons in it. The reason we put those in was because later on in the combinations, we were going to step up to fairly big camshafts. So we wanted to make sure, I mean, the strength of the piston really wasn't the issue. We wanted to make sure that we had enough piston to valve clearance so that we had valve reliefs in the pistons to run big camshafts. That's really the only reason that we upgraded it. But you could duplicate this with any basically junkyard motor like <laughs> right out of the wrecking yard or one that you're rebuilding that you already have. But to start off, we put together this 350 and we equipped it with a set of stock 882 smog heads, basically a stock hydraulic flat tap, flat tap and camshaft and a two barrel intake. We also installed the factory cast iron exhaust manifolds and basically just ran exhaust out of the cast iron exhaust manifolds back to the back with no no mufflers or anything so this is kind of your bare bones basic <laughs> small block chevy with a two barrel intake manifold cast iron intake manifold and a two barrel rochester uh, combination two barrel rochester carburetor so equipped with that two barrel and the stock exhaust manifolds this 350 made 241 horsepower and 359 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, torque number is actually not too bad, you know, more than one uh, pound foot per cubic inch, which is okay, but the horsepower number, not great for a small block 350. I mean, only, you know, 241 horsepower, that's not very much, but that's the two-barrel manifold. The first thing we did was install headers on this thing. So on our very mild combination, I would recommend headers even after you see the results here. <laughs> so after installing long tube headers, our power output jumped all the way to 248 horsepower. Now the gains were not great with the long tube headers, and that's because the rest of the motor wasn't in the position to take advantage of the headers. Long tube headers are definitely a good idea on any small block Chevy, unless you're trying to install them on this bone stock two barrel manifold, or this bone stock two, two barrel combination. Otherwise, long tube headers definitely a good idea, and we'll see that as we go up in power. So our next modification, because we had a two barrel intake and nobody wants to run that, here's what happens when you install a four barrel intake. Now this was a cast iron quadrajet intake with a factory quadrajet. So as you can see, and not unexpectedly, the, the four barrel intake manifolds with the long tube headers still made quite a bit more power. The peak torque was up to 385 foot pounds and peak horsepower was at 278 horsepower as you can see and it gained power everywhere from below 2500 rpm it matched the two barrel intake so there's no gain there there's no low speed power gain from there from the two barrel and just added more power through the whole curve so the next modification on our mild combination was to install a set of ported heads and a mild cam now what we did was install ported versions of the 882 heads. I would recommend milling these, which we didn't do. It would be a good idea. But we also installed a PE246, basically an RV cam. So this is a combination that would be go together for a guy that wanted kind of a 350 for towing, you know, or kind of a street application. As you can see, the ported head and camshaft picked up power quite a bit, even though it's a very mild cam. It's actually an emissions legal cam too, which is important to note. 340 horsepower and torque was up to 400 foot pounds now you guys are probably wondering well how much of this is the cam and how much of this is the heads actually the camshaft is probably worth 25 or 30 of this maybe and the remainder might be the cylinder heads now there's another option for this now i included the ported heads because if a guy already has a combination and he wants to port the heads what i would recommend 
take the heads out, port them, port match them, do the bull work, and also mill them, and you'll get some good gain. So if you already have the heads, that's a good option. The other option, obviously, you could put aftermarket heads on it, but if you want to go the inexpensive route, go to the wrecking yard and get a set of um, Vortec heads. Now, if you're going to do that, you also need a matching Vortec intake manifold, and there's there are lots of those available, even some inexpensive aluminum uh, dual-plane intakes that work with the Vortec heads. So the Vortec heads will offer increased compression because they have a smaller chamber, and they flow a lot better than an 8082 head does also. So if you run those, you're going to pick up power from compression. You're going to pick up extra flow. Just make sure that you have the valve spring necessary for whatever camshaft you're going to run on. So this is a good combination. And the final thing that we did with this, this kind of, you know, uh, milder uh, towing kind of combination was we installed an RPM air gap intake and a slightly bigger carburetor. We installed a 650 Holly on this thing, or a 650 Demon, I should say. And the combination of that RPM air gap and Demon carburetor compared to the factory iron Quadrajet intake and Quadrajet carburetor picked up quite a bit. Equipped with that combination, we made 360 horsepower and 416 foot-pounds of torque. And as you can see, there was basically just gain. There was really no loss by going to that new intake manifold and carburetor combination. So this is the mild combo we've jumped up using uh, these modifications as described. We've jumped up from like 241 horsepower to 360 horsepower. So those are nice gains. But now let's take a look at what happened when we step up to kind of the middle of the road performance upgrades. After demonstrating all the modifications on the mild combination, it's time to step up into something that's kind of a middle of the road, you know, maybe more of a street strip. The other mild combination was good for like maybe towing, and this is a good performance combination, but not really all out. Before we get to that, we need to understand that we installed a set of aftermarket cylinder heads and a camshaft on this and upgraded, obviously, with the, with the original short block. But it's important to note that no matter what changes you make, and since there are 20, 30, 40, 50 sets of different small block Chevy cylinder heads available, the heads that you put on, uh, the power gains that you get from those heads are going to be dependent on the combination itself. And what I mean by that is if you were to take a set of, you know, aftermarket airflow research heads that flow 280, 290, or even 300 CFM, depending on which one you pick, that head will support over 600 horsepower. But if you run it on a 450 horsepower combination and we compare it to, say, an inexpensive set of Chinese aluminum heads, let's say, for a small block Chevy, the gains that you get from the airflow heads might not be as great as they otherwise would if you had a serious combination where you're taxing both heads out. So it's just important to note. Now, on our combination, we installed a set of Holly aluminum heads and we also upgraded the camshaft. But know that there are other heads that would do other things, and you could certainly make more power. And we'll show you what happens when you go up even farther in camshaft on the wilder combination and, and really want to make some power. But here's what happened when we installed our set of Holly heads and a set of, and I'll kind of give you an idea where we were. So we started out at 241 horsepower, and then with our ported uh stock heads and our four barrel intake and aluminum intake, we made 360 horsepower. So here's what happened after we installed the Holly heads and a slightly bigger Extreme Energy 268 cam, uh, cam from Comp Cams. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. And again, it was still a flat tappet camshaft because this was a flat tappet motor. Later on, we're going to step up to a hydraulic roller cam when we really go big. But equipped with our Holly heads and our slightly bigger cam, the combination produced 418 horsepower. Torque was up as well, 444 foot-pounds of torque. And as you can see, even though we went up in camshaft and cylinder head, we still made as much power down low at 2500 as the, as the milder combination and basically just made more power everywhere, which is always good. Now, at some point, we obviously will have to start trading power for you know, the top end gains for the bottom end. But right now, we didn't have to do that. So this was a good combination and a good middle of the road, over 400 horsepower for, you know, for a small block Chevy. It worked it well. So now let's take a look at what happened when we step up even more in camshaft and cylinder head and intake manifold. With our small block Chevy combinations, we started out at 241 horsepower with the stock two-barrel stuff, stepped our way up to 360 horsepower after adding ported heads, a mild cam, a four-barrel induction system, 
Then we stepped up even farther with a set of aftermarket heads and a slightly bigger camshaft. So the next step up from there was to install even more camshaft and a set of even better cylinder heads. So what we did was install a much larger comp hydraulic roller cam. It was a retrofit cam that allowed us to run a hydraulic roller in a non-hydraulic uh, roller block. We also installed a set of Airflow Research 195 uh, competition heads. So the good ported ones. <laughs> we retained the uh, Edelbrock RPM intake manifold, but stepped up to a larger 750 Demon carburetor. So here's what happened when we made those changes to our combination. And remember, we had already modified our short block to accept this. So this is why we installed the forged piston with the extra valve reliefs to allow us to run a bigger camshaft. You probably could not run this camshaft and this cylinder head on a stock junkyard short block because there probably isn't enough piston to valve clearance. Besides, a flat top piston gives you a little extra compression and that's where we started with all of this. So we'd run the same short block on all these combinations. So equipped with our Airflow Research Heads, the 750 Holly and the bigger Comp Extreme Energy Cam, the power output jumped to 524 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 481 foot-pounds. You can see this thing was now starting to make some fairly serious power. It was a good combination. And, you know, thanks to that forward piston that gave us the valve relief, we could run enough camshaft in it. Now, the interesting thing is if you look down low, it didn't lose a ton of power. I mean, it's obviously this thing wants to run higher than the other combinations. And it's making good peak power out of the top. But it didn't lose a ton of torque down low compared to the other combinations. So it would still work well as a dual purpose kind of daily driver. But now what I want to do is get rid of all of these other pieces here so that it'd be easier for you guys to see. Because here's what happened when we made our final test. So this was with our Airflow Research Heads and the Big Comp Cam. Now here's what happened after we swapped over from the dual plane RPM air gap over to a single plane Victor Jr. with the same Demon carburetor. So equipped with the single plane, which is probably a good combination for this because since we were making power out at 6,500, the single plane worked pretty well out there. It made 541 horsepower, so it was up quite a bit. But as you can see, and it's typical of a single plane and dual versus a dual plane intake test, we lost a lot of low speed power with that single plane. I mean, we lost as much as 411 to 447. So we asked, we lost like 35 foot pounds there at 4200 uh, RPM. So this is, <laughs> these are the losses inherent in that kind of trade off. Yep, you get a little extra power at the top, but it does cost you down low. So you got to decide whether or not it's worth it. But remember, the cool thing is that this was the same short block. We ran very mild combinations, a kind of mid-level street strip, and then this kind of more racy combination, all using the same short block as long as you have enough piston to valve clearance with the valve relief in that flat top forged piston. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about the buildup of our small block Chevy? Well, technically it was three small block Chevys, the mild, the medium, and the wild combinations. I'll tell you what I like. Like, I like putting together a motor, putting it up on the dyno, and tuning it and finding out how much power it makes. But what I like even more than that is putting a motor up and making changes to it. I like finding out what the individual changes do. So when we started out with our combination, it was a basic two-barrel motor, and it made 241 horsepower. Now, using our cylinder heads, camshaft, and intake, we were able to upgrade that to different configurations. We went with our mild configuration that would improve torque and it was a mild buildup. Then we did our street strip. Then we did our wild combination. And we varied the power output of that combination starting at 241 horsepower. And we went all the way up to 542 horsepower. So basically we changed the power output of this same basic short block by over 300 horsepower, which is an impressive amount, especially since we're only starting at 241 horsepower. But it goes to show you, whatever you start with, you can make a lot of power, you can make a little power, or you can make somewhere in between. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep testing.